So welcome back to uh, yet another Twip Pro Photo Critique Critique Session. The topic for this week is books, which is a boring topic that was picked by Troy Miller, but hopefully we'll see some exciting images. <laughs> books? Really? Books. I did not pick it. You did pick books. You picked books. 100%. I have the text message thread that says you pick books. So it's all good. It's good. Maybe books is all right. Own it, Troy. Own it. I, all right, guys. I so love books. You love books. All right. I'm going to share my screen here, and I'm going to deactivate my lagging video so you guys don't have to suffer through my old Japanese monster movie lip sync. All right. So we'll go into general photo critiques. And we will sort this by date created. And Jim Peters. Jim's in here too, eh, Jim? All yeah. right, Jim's up first. Jim says, uh, Jim, I'm only going to read the first sentence. My mother and I had a thing for books. Jefferson's Complete Works, Volume 1 and 3, published in 19, 1853 and 1856, respectively, were typical of our library. All right, let's take a look at the shot. Come on, Mighty. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's awesome. All right, here we go. Look at this, 1800s. Wow. Yeah, I I love books. Uh, other than the fact that they're these um, tombs of knowledge and written words, they smell good. So I, mm -hmm. I know that these these books have to smell good when you open them. Um, and I and I really dig this. I I really do. I. I I love the fact that we've got this 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 page open or this letter open. It looks like it was a page that was maybe folded multiple times, you know, to fit inside the book. So it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. um, I like the fact that it's sharp all the way through, so I can I can see the words and I get a sense that these are older books. Yeah, uh, the yellowing around the edges. Right, right. Where where I struggle with this image is the Merry Christmas is out of context so i'm not really sure how that fits into the story the fact that the books are floating in this this space so mm -hmm. what what i really wish is that the the books had had one had a had a foundation but had more context so maybe like the books were stacked up leaned against it on a table uh maybe one book was open and and maybe that merry christmas is a bookmarker or something and that it, you know, it showed it in in place in the book, you know, and and then give us some depth, you know, uh, a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it's right now it's the books are kind of floating in space, and you have no, there's nothing to ground them. But yeah, I, I agree. The other thing that the challenging thing, and the thing I'm looking forward to looking at in all of these photos, this one included, is the challenge of defeating the human desire to read whatever you see in a photo, right? So the, the topic of books means you're automatically going to see, oh, I see United States of America in here. I see Merry Christmas, you know. So you, wanna, you want that level of context. So the artist needs to lean into that or obscure it somehow if it's not about whatever the books are about. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge. Right, right, absolutely, and I think that's I think that's where we struggle with all of our images. Whether we're photographing, you know, a stream and a landscape and a mountainscape, it's like what's what's the draw, what's the focus. Um, also, you know, putting things into into context and lighting so that we understand um, if this is more of a documentary type of photo. <clears throat> that's great; it works perfect. Maybe on a brochure or you know, showing off a collection but it's still floating. So, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, we do need a background. I, th I think we need a table or we need, you know, something. Um, I, I yeah. could see this photograph like with a Victorian oil lamp or by window light, you know, something, something like that to kind of put it into character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But what a wonderful That's thing cool. to own. Those are amazing. I know. I know. Though, 1800s, though, you know, wasn't a good year. <laughs> <laughs> just was it, Yeah, head challenging, yeah. <laughs> it's a little challenging for some people, just saying. I don't want to go back. Yeah. <laughs> cool, thank you. Jim Peters, very good. 
All right, next up is Craig Stanfley. Velichor, the strange and wistfulness of used bookstores, which are somehow infused with the passage of time. Yes, indeed, sir. This up. Oh, that is so cool. I just learned a new word. I learned a new word. Now you have to use that in a sentence somehow today in a conversation. I have to use that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, the the core of the books that I have. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> no, not here. You got to use it in oh. your normal life somehow. That's what my dad used to tell us. He's like, you know, you, you once you get a new word, if you hear a new word and you understand it, you have to use it that day in a sentence so that it's internalized and burned into your brain. Right. Okay. I'm going to put a new word in the chat just because it's in my head. There you go. <laughs> um, I, I, this is, this is such a great, a great photograph, Craig. I, I really, really love this. Uh, this reminds me of going on vacations and walking through small towns and Santa Barbara, you know, they've got all those used bookstores and, and, um, places like that, secondhand stores. And we always go in and touch the books and buy something. Uh, this is just, this is just great. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. I just, I love the context of this, of the books outside, then the books inside the window. Um, you know, we know that it's a storefront. Uh, I also really appreciate the fact that it's in black and white because I think that really, really helps this image to show us the shapes and the titles are easier to read and not be distracted by the colors. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it pushes you. It's like the, the artist Craig is saying, you know, the, pay no attention to all that detail it's about the sum total of all these things together because they're all in black and white versus you know kind of a patchwork of colors which would have driven us to look at whatever color is the brightest so yeah i dig this this is really cool yep yep very good i i really don't have anything that i could add other than other than maybe cropping the left a little bit to get rid of a little bit more of that hor horizontal lattice work on the building you know, I, I think that you could crop just those lines out. You know, leave the molding. Oh, yeah. Over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just crop in just a little bit. Yep. Yeah, I don't think those lines need to be there. And that's a little bit nitpickery. And it, I don't think it's going to hurt the books at all to crop them, to crop them in a little bit. Um, just get rid of those lines. But yeah, I dig cool. it. I dig it. That's why you're here. You're here for your nitpickery, right? So uh, that's yeah. not what I'm told, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other thing I was looking at this book, it makes me think of the you know, these old bookstores. Makes me think of back in when when uh, Kindles and tablets started taking hold. The whole right. brouhaha was about oh, physical books are going to go away. You know, save a tree. It's all over. It's all going to be digital from here on out. Yada yada, and that hasn't happened. Strangely enough, you know, books are still around, and you know, I would argue maybe more people tend to. I don't know. Sound off in the chat if you you know do when you read books, do you consume them digitally or do you prefer it on uh, on paper? For me, it's fifty yeah, fifty. Um. Yeah, I, you know, I used to read a lot of books. I used to read a lot of books. And I just don't anymore. Um, I do other things. But like Kira, my daughter, millennial, right? She mm -hmm. absolutely has to have the physical book in her hand um, because she's a collector. She yeah. likes to collect things that mean a lot to her and she likes to collect the things. So she might listen to a podcast, then she might listen to the audio book. But if it's something she, she really loves, she will seek that book out. And so she has to have it. And then she'll read yeah. it again on paper. I like that. Yeah. And then just the old ritual of lending books to people and writing stuff in the margins and dog earring pages and stuff. It's just, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a completely different experience. I love my iPad. I mean, I have another modality of, of reading books and that's audible. Right. So right. I've, I've read a mountain of books that I probably never would have had that information in my brain had it not been for audible. Cause you just don't have time to like, walk and read right <laughs> so, so well you know and the the beauty the beauty of actual books is um that they embrace the physical right like you have to turn the pages um a kendall has no velencore mm -hmm. see what i did nice, there nice move there <laughs> i see that 
But here's the thing. When you use it, you can't smile. You got to just flow with it. <laughs> you, just, you can't acknowledge that you did a thing or else you draw attention to the thing. Just yeah, Only roll you with saw it. me. Nobody else saw me. <clears throat> oh, awesome. Craig, I'm sorry, we're <laughs> See, I miss this. We got to start doing these these critiques back up weekly. Again. This is this is too much fun. Yeah. All right, Michael Brown's up next. He says, "My entry for the critique: Detective Stories. Detective oh. Stories. I repeat the title to give Mighty Networks time to load the image. Detective <laughs> Stories. <laughs> detective uh, I can't stories. blame Mighty. It might be me. I don't know. My computer's been acting crazy. It's definitely you. All right." This, this, this looks more like a bookshelf in the house I grew up in. Just just a, you know, endless, you, this, the book, this is the way books want to look like, right? Yeah. They want to be beat up and read and used and, and consumed, not pristine, right? Love this. Yeah. So what do, what do you think? So shallow depth of field, obviously, we got fall off in the foreground and the background, and what are we we kind of we get into focus on Donald Hamilton and we fall out right after the dim butcher looks like grave yeah. peril. Um, again, great choice using black and white. I, I think that this this topic and the way that we're looking at this works perfect for that. Um, and I love the I love the bookshelf. You know, being able to look down the bookshelf and and seeing those and that's so super familiar, especially for book lovers. I mean, you know, as a book lover, I, I just I want to go by and I want to look at every single spine and I want to read what it is and maybe pull one out and read the preface. And um, so this really, really speaks to, you know, individuals who love books. Yeah. Um, my my critique of this is, though, is that the books are leaning to the right. So I feel like they're going to fall over. So I think if we mm -hmm. rotate this image uh, counterclockwise a little bit, make the middle image, or I'm sorry, the middle book vertical, and let the rest of the books kind of tilt the way that they want to tilt. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I agree. And and I know you're also going to, can I draw a circle around what you're going to say next? Yeah, yeah. Let me do it real quick. I got to bring up my annotation tool here. You're going to talk about this area down here. The I am. Space. Yep, I am. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I think it's easy to resolve one once you've rotated it, and two, you've got so much that's out of focus that we don't need it. Um, I think that you could crop off half of the of the uh, foreground and then half of the background, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and put that Donald Hamilton book on the left thirds, so. So have more space behind it, less space in front of it. Kind of like that. It's a little, yeah. But I would, I would include a little more space on the left. But yes, that's roughly the idea, and all the way to the yeah. bottom. Oh, yeah, all would, the way down. Would, okay. Yeah, I would include all the way to the bookshelf itself. But so maybe like, yeah, like this, and bring it in on the right a little bit, so we don't need that that hole at the. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now we're vertical and it's accentuating the fact that these are vertical lines in here. Yeah. Yeah. And then yep. rotate the whole thing to the left a little, right? Yeah. And you could pick whatever crop suited you best. If you want, if you want to make it more horizontal, open it up a little bit. If you want it more square, you know, make it square. But uh, I don't think that having that shadow hole at the end does any good. And we have all that, that negative space in the sense that it's just so out of focus you know, we don't really know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing, you know, when I look at this, I, we, like we, we used to say back in the day, like when we first started these, what's the hero of the image or who's the star or who's the, what, what do you as the artist want me to look at? And I feel like my eye is going straight to Donald Hamilton. So maybe pop that out just a little bit, you know, like, if that's the story, this is the story about that particular book and it holds a, it holds special meaning that particular book. So we've already used the tool of, of depth of field to, to kind of reduce the, uh, the data on the other 
books in there, but bring him out, bring Donald out just a little bit more. Maybe it's just a matter of increasing contrast on the font on Donald Hamilton or something, right. but just pop it out just a little bit so that it's obvious that look at this, you know, maybe it's a vignette. I don't know, but look at this, that, that this guy, this book is what's important. Right. Right. Yeah. No, good, good suggestion. No, I, I love that. I love that shot too. That's just, that's perfect. Yeah. That's fun. I can see that framed. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love these shots. These are great. All right. Good topic. Good. Whoever picked it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I picked it because apparently you didn't, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I looked it up. Damn it. Yeah. I looked. I just have memory. See, it's the first thing to go. <laughs> memory, memory, eyesight, will to do cool things. So that's the order of the <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, Karen Sweeney says, one of these days I'll actually read this book in the meantime. Hey, Google. Yeah, the singularity is, is near. Um, who wrote this? Was this Neil Stevenson? Who was the author? I think Neil Stevenson. Why is it Have you heard of this book, there? Troy? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Well, he basically, where is, is Stephen in here? Stephen's not here. Stephen could give a more eloquent definition of what the singularity is. But it, it's basically the point where uh, machine technology overtakes human oh, okay. cognition. Right? Okay. So, Got it. So that gives you context of why she's got the hey, hey Google tap or tap. I was going to say I wasn't I wasn't entirely sure as to why that was in there, but now it makes a lot more sense. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 It's fun, and it's coming. If it's not already here, you know those supercomputers, those uh, those quantum computers. If you saw Google's I/O conference, they they talked about that new quantum computer that they're. They actually have an entire facility dedicated to it. I think it's down near you somewhere in Riverside, oh, where it's just a, it's basically Skynet. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. So maybe unplug those smart switches you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't, yeah. Let's not go down that path. That's a, exactly. that's a, that's yep. a deep rabbit hole. It is. Um, it is. So this book, what do you think? She's got fiber optics in here. She's got look what looks like fluorescent black light in here, uh, a tablet. What do you think? I, you know, I love the story. I think that, uh, you know, the use of the color is really awesome. I like that. I like how the, the, the phone, right, the Hey Google is sort of juxtaposo, ju juxtaposition, juxtapo juxtaposed <laughs> in the, in the, juxtaposed. Yeah. Just, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Switched. No, I, <laughs> I dig that. No, I, I, I do. I, I dig that. I think that where I'm challenged with this is I don't know that it's a book. Uh, oh, right. It could be a movie poster. It could be anything, but I don't know that it's a book. So you know, in the context of the topic, I have a hard time seeing a book in here. So that would be that would be my only critique is just somehow give a better sense that it's an that it's an actual book. Um, right. Other than right. that, I, I like the play. I do. I think she could she could accomplish that by just skewing the book itself to the left a little bit so we could see a little bit more of the binding or the the, the pages. So that it 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 reads more as a book rather than just a straight on rectangle. True. Yeah, you could have changed some of that perspective some way. Um, maybe put a mirror or a reflection or something to show the spine of the book. Um, maybe this would be on the on the preface or something like within the book itself with the pages open, where you could actually see the title and maybe who it's written by. You know, something something of that nature. You could still keep the colors and could be very abstract in nature, and could still have the phone maybe leaning in the back um, or just off to the side. Like maybe this book was open and you were just going to start reading it, and then the book was right there. So a little bit more of a film noir. Um, secondary <clears throat> mystery in the background you know with the phone kind of thing instead of just so obviously laid on top yeah no i agree oh ray kurzwell craig says yeah that's the, right uh, that's right mother. yes yeah. yes yeah thank you craig stanfley yep playing the part of stephen scharf in today's program is craig stanfley <laughs> why is, is right. stephen not here is he not in here i was chatting i didn't him see him in here I'm gonna send him a 
I sent him a quick. So he's over there playing with them cats and taking pictures and listening to great audio. <laughs> I'm going to send him a quick link to make sure he gets in here. He may not. Right, he may not have is, seen the change. Nora is in here. Yes, Nora's in here. She says, "Waiting for words." Uh oh. Nora always brings the pain in these. Look at that. Oh, See, this so is cool. the, the depth of field here. Is just it's just gorgeous. I love that. I'm anxious to hear what you think, though. So I'll give my thoughts. I'm anxious to hear what your thoughts are, Troy. Um. Wow. Uh. Of course, I of course I love it. I mean, it, I I love the abstract nature of it. I think the thing that I that I struggle with the most, without the title, right? If there was no title, I would I would be hard pressed to guess what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I would, and maybe, maybe that's the beauty of it is that, you know, you have to just let somebody figure it out. And if it speaks to them, then they get it. But I love the fact that it's blank line pages. I am, I am, I have a notebook addiction. So I probably mm -hmm. have 50 notebooks that are blank because I just love the notebooks and I don't want to write in them because then that would taint them. <laughs> so... <laughs> I know. It's like, that's like a chef saying, you know what? I have a bunch of pots and pans, but they're so beautiful. I can't cook in them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I was, I was just chatting with Steven. He, he knows he said he had, he's busy. So, okay. At least we didn't, oh, yeah. at least we know. Um, but no, I, I just, I love notebooks. And um, I actually, when I was younger, I started writing a novel and it's all in these specific notebooks that had to match and, um, and my daughter is the same way. Like when we used to go to Barnes and Noble, we'd always buy a notebook just because we just love the notebook. Um, oh, that's so, so I have a, I have a lot of notebooks waiting for words. <laughs> so well, this you, a glimpse, a glimpse into the, the the quality person that is Troy Miller. So you heard, you guys heard that he's also a uh, I don't know what you call this type of person, but you, the people that love their pins. You know, you treat your pins <laughs> like, like fine cigars and writing instruments, like you're signing the Declaration of Independence or something, Where, versus people like me that buy packs of 100 big pins. You are, you buy, you know, $500 pins that you keep for decades, right? Right, right. And, and I can only write on certain paper. So there's, there's certain paper that, the, that my pins love, and it has a certain texture and feel um, I'm guessing this paper is it because I like paper that has some deep texture, has a lot of fiber that absorbs a lot of ink. So I know, I know it's just this, this whole, can you, can you write on your iPad? Do you, you have the pen, you have the pen for yeah, your iPad, right? I use it. Do you I write on it all the time? I do. I use it all the time. Yeah. Do you have, do you, we were talking we were chatting back and forth. I sent you that link for that paper like stuff, that screen protector that adds a rough surface to your iPad. So it feels more like paper. You should try I, that. I will. I did not know that existed, to be honest. Um, it's I, I can't. You can't not have it on any iPad going forward after you put it on there. It is just. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's you know normally when you write on it, it feels like you're just slipping all over the place. It feels like paper, so it's really cool. Oh, that's good to know. That's good. Um, looking at looking at this at this image, uh, I I love it. I I think it's fantastic. I really don't have a lot to add to it other than I struggle a little bit with the the sharp sliver that is on the left page. And I wonder, you know, if, if it wouldn't oh, be better. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Let me get, get my pen out. Speaking of pens. Yeah. You're yeah, talking I'm about wondering this. If it wouldn't be better to, to, you know, blur that out and let that fall. That could have been done when you photographed it is just open the book ever so slightly, just move that left page to the left a little bit. It probably would have just fallen out of focus on its own. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, other, other yeah, than I was that. Gonna, I was going to draw, I was literally going to draw a circle around that. And then this thing right here, I don't know what's gone, going on there, but it messes with the clean lines that are happening in here. And I don't know what you would do about that. How, how would you get get rid of that little whatever that is, Troy? Uh, very carefully, um, <laughs> surgically. But but seriously, because <clears throat> because the amount of depth of field that you have there is is gradiated, 
which means that you can't simply just clone from somewhere else in the book, you know, arbitrarily, like you have to make sure that the, the, the blur, the out of focus portion matches. So what I would probably do is use darken first on a, on a stamp tool in Photoshop mm -hmm. and just yep. get rid of that highlight. That's probably all I would do is just knock yeah. down that highlight. Yep. 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 And just to, speaking of drawing attention to things, Nora, it is, it is not lost on us that you, you pay, you are intentional about your crop right. here. See that? <laughs> that's, that yeah, I love it. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna mention that. Um, and Nora did mention that 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 white spot is the binding in the book. And I recognize that it's probably it depends on how the binding is done. But I'm guessing it's probably like a little piece of thread that mm. uh, is coming through. And that's very common in some of the thread bound books. And you so. know, what? if you could see that, like if, if it were up here somewhere and it were in focus, mm -hmm. it would actually lend to the photo, I think, because it would it would it would add a little bit more data to the mystery or to the narrative that this is a book I and mean, this is bound. So to, to your point at the beginning, you were talking about how, you know, it's, it's abstract. I don't know if it's a book or not, you know, if you if it weren't in the context of this critique. But if you could tell that there was binding action happening in there, they would like, oh, of course, that's a book, you know. And, you know, the whole idea of pattern interrupted. You have all these sort of geometrical lines and clean and abstract and then something that's just a ball of thread or something right there to break right. it up and make it feel grounded. I don't know. Right. I like this stuff. I like I like it. This could definitely be a series, like a, a triptych on on books, right? And this is this is one this is Nora's favorite unwritten in book that she can't she can't move herself to put ink <laughs> on it because it's too pristine. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like it's like James, James says blank journals, shame, shame. Uh I know. I I have plenty of journals that are filled but I have several that are not and images like this speak to me because I have a hard time starting. So, uh, that is so I would hang, I would hang something like this. I, I buy the same kind of notebook. I bought the same kind of spiral bound black Cambridge notebook for <laughs> literally decades and I'll write in it. And then when I'm down to the last few pages, I'm off to Staples to get another one. And you know, no. so I don't know. Oh, Oh my gosh, there is a world <laughs> of amazing and beautiful notebooks. You have got to get more notebooks. Just just for the sake of of something different, you'll find better paper. And uh, like my favorite is dots. I like I don't like lines, I like dots. Oh yeah, I buy I buy graph paper. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. My my um as I get older, my penmanship gets worse. I guess the less I write and the more I type, my penmanship is just down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you, Nora. I think that was Always the most talked through. about image so far. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right. Eric Pronsky's up next. And Eric's in the chat. Hey, Eric. Eric says, bookshelf, Trinity College Library image taken in Dublin, Ireland. I used the vertical shelf support just left of the ladder to straighten the perspective. The books are side lit from a window. All natural light. Look at that. All right. That's cool. That is cool. Talk about, talk about geometry, pattern interrupted, and, you know, there's... I'm looking at it, and the fact that I can't see any titles on spines draws me in and makes it feel more, even more abstract. It uh, feels like a, a yeah. If you zoom well, you in, you I mean, can... there are some in there, but not enough yeah, for you to like enough. to you know you'd have to zoom in to read stuff. Right. Yeah. Which is what I'm doing. Um... <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> I don't think any of it's in English, so I can't tell. I can't tell what what most of it is. Uh, yeah. This is this is this is really really wonderful. I really love the intention and the colors. And it, you know, anybody who loves books, you just want to be in a place like this, right? Like you just want to go in and touch these books and and look at them. Um, so I really I really like that, and I like the composition with the ladder. Um, I'm just kind of looking at you know the composition of the ladder. I don't know if I would if I would crop the top. I. I do feel 
that the lighting is a little bit hot and it's a little bit flat in not, not flat in contrast, but flat in the fact that the lighting direction is the same all over the image. Mm -hmm. So what I would probably do is I would bring the exposure down a tad. I would do a little bit of dodging and burning to bring my attention, you know, maybe to the second rung from the bottom, which is kind of the brightest spot in the image. This area right here. Yeah. But bring the overall tone down. Um, get it a little bit darker. You know, this is stuff that you can easily do in post. You know, yeah. just bring bring the exposure or the brightness level down. Um, burn down the right side of the ladder so that 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 hot spot or that 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 rail that's closest to the window doesn't get most of the light. So now the the ladder itself would kind of fall away and be a secondary subject. Right now, it's kind of a competing with the books, mm -hmm. and I would like to see the books be the hero. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Who's who's the hero? The ladder or the books? Yeah. Yeah. Eric's saying in the in the chat that lighting is through that diffused window. Yeah. He said that in the chat. Yeah. Right. Or in the ca caption. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. My other suggestion would be to crop. I don't think we need that very 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 top shelf, um, because I can't see the tops of the books anyway. So mm -hmm. what I what I would maybe suggest is is to crop just below the top rung and right here um, so kind of like this below, below the top rung okay yeah because i like so. the idea of the of the mystery of not having not having the top you know a rung above it but i like yeah. i also like seeing a majority of book where the rung above that we, we see very little book and i feel like if we cropped it down just below that top rung we'd see a lot of the book We'd see that that rung below it, but then there's that mystery of like, oh, is there another step above there? Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Where does it go? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I love the fact we get that rung in the bottom. It, yeah, everything else, I just I dig it. I would just work on that exposure and try to bring a little bit more mood into the image by by taking some of those highlights down on the on the ladder. How do you feel about the the fall off on the right side here, the shadow? I'm okay with that because it gives me a sense that it goes on further. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I feel like yeah. this could be a big room and and maybe that just that goes off into the distance. So I really like that. So I'm good with that. And that's probably where the the window naturally fell off because it seems like a very natural fall off. It's not a vignette. Yeah. Very cool. cool. Like it. <clears throat> and color. You're good with this in color? Or would you, yeah, would I would you just, try to do black and white? Um, I would play with it. I would try black and white, but I think that this image already has a lot of uh, monochromatic elements and and I like the warm tones of the spines of the books, and they're all the same. So yeah. they're not dis they're not distracting, right? It's not like you've got this bright blue title and or book and there's this bright red or yellow or green. <clears throat> they're all, you know. Similar I agree because I feel like yeah, with like the the color in this situation, yeah, the, you, like you're right, it's already kind of monochromatic. We only have, we're playing with a limited number of tones here, um, but the color of the book adds to the to the, the, these old books sitting on the shelf. I can almost smell them, you know, the leather yeah. and the binding and all that. With the color with the color gone, it would lose a lot of that. The color in there, I kind of feel like I'm I can feel the books more. Sure. And because this is window light, it's going to be cool. And so because it's shade light. So what I would do is too, is I would go into the blue channel and I would make sure that I pull down any of the blue tones that exist. Because I think you're getting a little bit of blue cast in the right side of that ladder in the highlight, and then add a tad bit of warm. And I think that it would look more natural that way. Right now it feels a little, it feels a little cold, but that could be, it yeah. could be mighty, but the ladder yeah. is, it's definitely a little cool. Yep. Cool. Nice. I like the shot a lot, though. Eric Bronski. So many. All right. Next shot up is James Glennie. I don't know if the book's critique is happening. Yes, it is happening right now. I'm not <laughs> seeing the other images. We just showed a bunch. No, I'm kidding. 
Uh, but in this case, here's a late submission. This book is over 150 years old. Wow. Let's bring this up. Do, do, do. Okay. Yeah, see, that's cool. That is cool. I'm always a sucker for the close-ups like this. It just draws you right in there. And 150 years, the stories this book could tell, right? Oh, funny. Nice, <laughs> nice play on words there. You see what I did there? You see I what I did see, there? I kind of see what you did there. multi-layered there, man. Multi-layered. <laughs> barely. Barely pulled that off. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't compete with me, man. Come on. I, uh... You know, I, I love the I love the context of this. I like how this is done where you've got, you know, this really, really tight shot of the spine. Um, you've got, it looks like two books are back to back, even though the description says this book. Um, so I'm assuming the main character there is the older book. Um, I like the black and white. I, I feel like across the top, there's that little triangle um, along the book, you know, right where the hinge is, there's that that light colored triangle right there. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's on the book itself or if that's just masking, you know, something to do with the way that it was masked, but I would definitely clean that up and darken that. Just that little area right there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's the dust jacket. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. It's cause I, because I didn't see it on the bottom. I wasn't sure if that's what it was, if it was a dust jacket or, you know, maybe it was something else, but. I love seeing the edge of that paper. You know, you can see how each each set of you know paper is like folded and how it's bound in there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, look at that. That is just you don't get that on an iPad, man. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I think it's kind of cool that we don't know how big this book is. I mean, we can guess. You know, we could guess and say, oh, this is probably two inches, right? Like try a two inch book, um, or it feels like a hefty book. But we really don't know. It could be really, really thin paper, and it could be a, a much thinner book. So I like that mm -hmm. abstractness of it. Yeah. And how how do you feel about the key line in the border in this situation? Fantastically done. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Miller. He never met a border he didn't like. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> I mean, if he had used the purple that you're using on the critique page, uh, I would not have been approving. <laughs> uh, I'm changing that purple, by the way. So. <laughs> I don't even think with default. purple, it's just a lot of it. It's just, yeah, it's it's out there. Yeah. Yeah, that's very I like great. This. I love this. I love this. This is good. Very creative. Very creative, James. Yep. I like the close-ups. Very good. James, thank you, sir. All right. And I think that's it, right? Let's see. La, la, la. Uh, is it? Yeah, that's it. All right. Do we have a favorite? Do you have a favorite? Oh, my goodness. Hmm. I have I, a favorite. Okay. I'm I'm gonna do well, well I'm gonna default to you. Let me see. Yours, your favorite is let's see, which one's your favorite? Your favorite. Yeah is Nora's. Am I right? It's between Nora's and Eric's. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mine was between Nora's and Craig's. Um, that whole bookstore thing I really, I really love, but I love the abstract that, that Nora, that Nora put in there. Let me go back. So here's but Nora's. Technically, I guess I guess it's a book. Does a book require words to be a book, or is it a journal? What is it? What is it without words? Oh, that's a good point. What is the definition of a book? Does it have to have words in it? Can it just is a is an empty? Well, an empty notebook is still a book, right? It's a notebook. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. What is it then? If it's not a book, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I I'm happy with whatever you choose because they're all so amazing. Oh yeah, you gotta put it on me, huh? Look at that. It, Look yeah, at that. you normally put Coward. it on me. <laughs> Coward. All right. Uh, I think I like Eric's. I think you go with Eric's. I think okay. it, it feels warm. It definitely is book, right? There's no question about it being books. Uh, Nora's is fantastic too, but this one just for some reason draws me in. It's either right. you know when I think of it from a 
from a movie standpoint, if you like a cinematic standpoint, and this is a scene in a movie, this could be a scene from a horror movie. It could be the scene from a romantic comedy. It could be the scene from, you know, any number of kinds of flicks and you could weave a story around it. Yeah. That's really, it's yeah. really cool. <clears throat> yeah. I like it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Well done everybody. Yeah. This is, this is really great. Yep. Well done. Like I like, like I don't like my steaks. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my God. All right. Uh, before I forget, what is uh, what are we gonna pick for our topic for next week or next the next critique? Which I'm I gonna try to it. I'm gonna I'm putting Troy on the spot here. I'm gonna try to get him to do the critique on Monday again, a week from today. This two week thing, I don't know, losing from some momentum. So I don't know. Uh, We're gonna try to do it. Okay, yeah, we'll have to look at the calendar and see. Somebody oh will do it. We'll do it. Somebody. And if Troy okay. can't do it. How about this? If Troy is too busy with more important things than us, then someone that's in the chat right now, raise your hand if you want to co-critique with me. How about that? Well, you should do that anyway, then. Let them do it. Look at that. Yes. Yes. So raise your hand in there or message me or DM me. Cool. So what's the topic? Yeah. What's the topic going to be? Uh, tools. 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 Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's very generic. And anything could almost be a tool. I like yes. that. Yes, yes. No I have no photos of people you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bunch of tools from my grandfather, who was a steel worker. Uh, met, uh, he was like a fabricator for GE, and he made all the ducting and everything in, like in their factories. Then I have like all of his his soldering tools, which were mechanical, like he had to heat them up in a furnace. And I have all of his hammers, and they're just they have so much character. That doesn't have to be the tool you use, but that's what really got me thinking is is they're laying on my workbench, and I've been wanting to photograph them for a long time. Yeah, and so cool. Yeah, it can be tools because my the tools I use on a daily basis are different, right? I mean, this is a this is one of the tools, and this computer, and this camera, and even this chair. You know, all this stuff. These are tools yeah. to get our job done. Yeah, that's these are actually this is actually equipment. Tools actually do things. Like a screwdriver is a tool. I don't I don't think your microphone is a tool. You don't think so? No. What is it? Let's. I don't know. It know. is something that I use to create stuff, right? It is a tool. Define tool. Well, I'm going to look it up. Let's see. Uh, yes. A handheld device that aids in the accomplishment of a task. Look. No. Nah. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. That's a, that's, that's a loose interpretation. We'll let, we'll let our brilliant community. Is this a tool? Uh, is this a tool? Look at that. Huh? Uh, huh? That's an abomination is what that is. <laughs> what about this? This aids me in the accomplishment. Of no, the task. no. You need to stop. You need to stop. <laughs> An yeah, implement. Everything, especially this is one art, man. Everything is up for interpretation. Oh, no. Here we go. An implement, especially one that is handheld as a hammer, saw, or file for performing a or facilitating a mechanical operation. Yeah. When was that definition written, though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's on yeah, freedictionary.com. It has to. <laughs> <laughs> no, tools change. Tools change. Oh, oh, I have a super old dictionary. I will go get and I will look up tool. <laughs> yeah, we'll look it up in that dictionary and then look it up in the new dictionary. Wait, do we have a, does the Mac come with a dictionary built in? Yeah. Yeah, James, okay. uh, table saw? Well, based on that definition, I guess I guess it's not. Although those that use table saws refer to them as tools. So I, I leave it up to the community to interpret as they will. Yeah, there you go. This is where you got. Yeah, device or implement. One is handheld. A, a thing used in an occupation or pursuit. Don't read number huh? three out loud. Yeah, no, I'm not reading that. <laughs> tool? I guess it's, it can be used in an occupation. <laughs> How is that even? Really? Do they really need to put that in? <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. Come on. Oh, wow. All right. 
Uh, cool. All right. So, tool for next for the next critique. Troy may or may not be involved in that one, depending on his schedule, because he's so busy running around building things. But cool. Uh, I'm gonna end this recording and then open it up and let everyone come and hang out for a bit and then we're off into the races thanks everybody for watching this and if you are a twit pro member and part of this zoom you can hang out with us afterwards this is twit